Did you find yourself trying all of the new trending topics of 2020 while we were all quarantined? Did you binge watch all of the shows on Netflix? Did you make sourdough bread? Did you start a TikTok? Did you, uh, I don't know, what else did we do? Live in your sweatpants? Did you eat a pint of frozen ice cream or whatever cookie dough you might choose to have? Did you try new recipes? What are the things in 2020 that you did do? Were you creative around the space you needed to live in? Or did you shut down and not look for the opportunities to grow? On today's episode of Thrive Forward, we welcome Fabiana Peterson, who is a brain and life coach. We are going to tackle some of the topics of how do you get creative and look for opportunities to get outside of your comfort zone and what your brain actually does throughout every step of that process because your brain is a powerful muscle you see we can actually train our brains to do the things that we want to do to get out of those situations that might not actually be feeding us that have long-term impacts to our lives so for you listen It's time. It's time for you to take ownership of where you are, what you need, and know that you have the power within to do that. Why Fabiana? Well, she is fabulous at making space, creating great conversation, and allowing you to see exactly the change you have the power to make in your life. So tune in to this episode of Thrive Forward. And of course, if you know somebody that might need a little bit of a kick in the butt with love to move forward in 2021 while reflecting back on 2020 and what we need to do to move that needle forward in our life in a way that's positive. And I'm not talking toxic positive. I'm talking about your perspective, knowing that you are worthy of moving forward. Tune into this episode, share it with them, and allow both of yourselves to get in that right mindset to prove your worth to you because that's the only person you have to prove it to. Before we start, can I do something? Absolutely. I know it's your birthday tomorrow. So I want to sing happy birthday in Portuguese for you. Can I? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, please. <laughs> Nesta data querida, muitas felicidades, muitos anos de vida. Viva Xena! I love it. This is how we sing happy birthday in Brazil. And lights actually are off. <laughs> you sing it with the lights off too? The candles on and everyone, everyone clapping. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel like I should have been Brazilian in a, in a previous <laughs> life with... A beautiful Brazilian body, I have to tell you. Oh, well, thank Me you. <laughs> I mean, I've been working on it. It's that lovely workout and self care that I'm sure we're going to weave into our conversation today and how we move our bodies and how that helps our minds. But for those of you that don't know, Fabiana is a life coach and a coach for women, helping them transform their lives. And the piece that I love so much about you, Fabiana, is that you come from a space of walking the walk, not just talking the talk, like you do it every day. So let's talk a little bit about some of your experience and how you got to the space that you're in right now, because your journey and your story is just so fantabulous. It's kind of like one famous Brazilian song that all of us might know, right? We're the little girl from Ipanema. I am the girl from Ipanema who ended up in Minnesota. (laughs) Yes. So, um, well, by the way, I am almost finishing my certification to actually be considered a brain coach, brain and life coach. Wonderful. Uh, Because of all of my interest in and now uh, studied knowledge of neuroscience uh, that came from the development of trying to understand the human mind, human emotion, and why we do what we do what we think the way we think and it it all started actually i just thought it of this yesterday i was talking to someone else and and um she said how did you start being interested in 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 neuroscience like it was actually reading a book about teenagers Mm. uh when my daughter was 12 she turned into 
a completely different human being. So I was like, what the heck is going on? And the book says, why do they act that way? And it's all about the brain, what happens in the brain of a teenager. And, and that's when I started understanding the connection between brain and emotions. And that is, that's what it is. What you think is what you become. It makes perfect sense. So me coming from the financial markets, 20 years in that world, and then 30 years in the corporate world, um, getting into life coaching was actually kind of by chance. I think the calling came from God and being honest with you. I think mm-hmm. he tapped my shoulder and said, you got a gift, you got to do this. And it just happened. Um, it was after a very hard divorce that I've been through that taught me so many lessons in my life uh, that today I actually understand with the study of science why I came out so positive and why it worked. Um, the way I was thinking, the way I was using my brain actually was in my favor. Um, and, and then I had to get a job to make more money, left the financial markets, was let go from that job. First time in my life being fired. I was always, you know, the one being brought in yeah. uh, from the company. So that was another big lesson. And then while I was searching for a job, when I created my Instagram account, The Few Fabulous by Fabiana, is when I started being really into inspiring and empowering women with messages. And that's when one of my followers from Europe somewhere, I don't remember if I think it was London, she sent me a message you changed my life. You make such a difference with your messages. Are you a life coach? That is the first day that I was like, huh, really? Mm-hmm. You know what? That is interesting. Let me look into that. And I actually started talking to other coaches that I knew um, and found the, the certification in Chicago that I, that I thought was the right one and then got certified, got my business cards, never looked back. And the neuroscience of it started, this is almost three years ago, and the neuroscience started, actually last year started getting really interested in, and during the lockdown in March, uh, all of those big schools were giving free courses, right? Yes. So I got into a free class for Yale on neuroscience, and, wow. and after that, I just, you know, I got another, you know, neuroscience class from a Brazilian, three times PhD neuroscientist finishing now a brain certification from Dr. Amen Clinic in, in California. And my husband just gave me, I don't know if you can see a brain. <laughs> yes. Well, I've seen it on your social media. I love that you have a brain back there. So excited. And it makes such a difference because it, the concept is so simple. Doesn't mean it's easy to do, right? Uh, but it's basically your emotion. The emotion is the biological reaction in your body to the stimulus in the environment on your senses. So your heart racing, your stomach turning, or your cheeks getting blushed, all of those are your biological reaction uh, to whatever stimulus is happening in the environment. And for the brain to make sense of it, it goes back to your hippocampus, which is the part that you have your memory box. So what happened in the past how that I felt this way, what was going on? And then comes the thought. The thought could be completely wrong, connected to what's happening right now. And if you don't analyze your thoughts, what happens is when you think, your brain releases hormones, right? Cortisol, Mm -hmm. dopamine, endorphin, serotonin, all of those, you know, the good or the bad. And that's Mm -hmm. when you feel good or bad, happy, sad, anxious, whatever. And there are different parts of the brain that actually work on the different parts of emotions. But um, the limbic system is the whole part of the brain that handles emotion, which by the way, women have a bigger limbic system. Mm, That doesn't surprise me in the least. And and our brain, the part of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, where is the executive part of the brain, where you think uh, all of the functions is like focus, forethought, learning from mistakes, organization, planning, empathy, all is done right here. It's not formed in the brain of a woman until she's about 25 years old. And in the male, 28. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) So all of that. um, And how do you connect the emotion to the brain is the the thoughts. No, your thoughts are actually 80% of our thoughts are negative. I think I've mentioned that to you before, Mm. 80 And I don't consider them negative. I call them protective thoughts because it is a 
survival machine is always trying to protect us. Um, so we're always trying to see what's wrong here and we're always trying to survive. Even though we're not cavemen anymore, the brain is that old, you know, to this day, we live in the world that we live, but we still react as if there's a cyber tooth. (laughs) (laughs) Fight or flight, fight or flight. Yes, that's the amygdala. That's what it does. Uh, So, and that's the part when I coach that we have to understand that when you, for example, when you get angry, okay, what happens? Um, As I mentioned to you right before we started um, this call is that when you're angry, it's a feeling of unfairness is happening within you, right? Mm -hmm. But then when you have that feeling, you know, you have a a biological reaction, then you're amygdala, oh, 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 I'm angry. So, and if you do not, try to have some kind of cognitive thinking. Your amygdala is literally, your emotional brain takes over. And that's when you're, you're, because your thoughts are just going to be like, for example, someone cuts you off on the road. You get really mad. That person is going to, you know, you you start, son of a gun, he just got me off. Why is the thing? You just start going to think and you go into a spiral that you're just going to get worse and worse. And depending on the person, um, you might get, running after that person get a gun and hit him you know and kill him Mm -hmm. because you get so angry so how do you stop that don't allow the amygdala to take over that's why people say when you're angry count to 10 what do they mean by that you allow your prefrontal cortex to take over instead of the amygdala you're doing cognitive thinking one two three four so literally you're getting angry i always give one phrase to my clients it's not me it's not me. You're taking over your, your thinking process is not emotional anymore. Like, you know what, this guy is probably, you know, his mom is in the hospital, he's running or he's having a bad day. It's not me. I am okay brain. I'm not trying to survive. It's not someone trying to kill me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Literally, that's what we have to do. It's yeah. cognitive thinking. And if the person is yelling at your face, you can't, you can't just like, it's not me. What normally, honestly, there's a trick to that. That one I learned from the neuroscientist in Brazil. When someone is in your face yelling at you and you're starting to get that feeling of anger, you know what you do? Honestly, think of something. You have to do cognitive thinking. Think of your list of the supermarket or the bill that you have to pay. Literally, you have to shift your thought because if you're focused on the person yelling at you, you are going to feel threatened and your reaction your natural biological reaction is going to trigger your brain to think negative survival things. Yeah. Wow. Distract your mind. It it is fascinating. I could talk for hours, so you can stop me whenever you want. (laughs) No, I think when we, we start to talk about, I have so many avenues that I could go down with that because I think that I deal with these types of conversations a lot with clients when we start to talk about money too, because there's the fear of losing money, of not having enough money, um, uh, of, of talking to and having a difficult conversation with somebody that they love around money, right? There are a lot of different things that end up happening in the space. And I say too, that a lot of my job is, is talking through the emotions behind everything. It's not actually the rates of return on a portfolio or what the portfolio does. Cause they kind of all do the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's more so figuring out what do we need to do to get ourselves past that emotion and really feel very like foundationally grounded. And so how do we hit that reset button or how do we hit that button in the front of our forehead that says, how are we going to respond to this situation as it is not a threat to us? It is not something that we need to, you know, go into panic mode about. Oftentimes I say, how do we plan instead of panic? Uh, I, I think about this too, as we are starting out a new year after a year that has been one where we feel like we've kind of always had to be on the defense or we're fearful about what is happening um, in our country, whether it's racial unrest or COVID-19 or the mental health crisis. I mean, we have so many different things that we could go through that people are battling right now. Um, and, And how do we kind of flip that switch as we go into 2021 without forgetting what's happened but instead resetting ourselves going forward. How have you been working with clients on that? Everything in life. 2020, when was the Spanish flu? Whatever, when it happened, 1800s? 
you know, 2001, planes crashed. Mm -hmm. Every, anything that happens, everything is about perspective. The way you choose to see the situation and the way, when I say see, is the way you're thinking about it is the way you're going to feel about it. So if you say this was a horrible year, this was a hard year, this is how you're going to feel. Mm -hmm. And I actually was thinking the other day, I actually should share that on my Instagram because it, it, it just came to me and I think it's so fitting. Um, the word that I would use for 2020, if you, if you ask me to choose a word, I would say creativity. Mm. Every human being in this world, not in the US, in this world, had to figure out how to be more creative. Moms with five little kids in the house that they had to work and be homeschooling. People that have businesses and doing events alive, that was their living. They had to figure out how to fix that. Be like people that live alone, what do I do now? How do, you know, everyone had their own challenges. And if you see that challenge as something positive in the sense that it gonna, it's going to take me to a better place if I figure out the right path, let me be creative here. When, you are cre when we are creative, we open our minds to opportunity. Mm. So it's creative equals opportunity. When you're just living, when you're just living life the brain just wants to survive and be, you know, let's just be comfortable. That's the word. When you're comfortable, you are not open for opportunities. Mm -hmm. And one thing that also is very interesting, uh, and I see that with my clients and, and, and I understand why. When I say this, and that's why I want to repeat it so people really understand that's science. We like to be comfortable the brain is lazy <laughs> it doesn't like to work too much it likes to sleep eat have sex and you know and go to the bathroom literally that, that those are the basic survival so that's when people say if you don't sleep eight hours a night which is when the brain is washed out and when your toxins are you know uh, removed and when your memory is all uh you know reconstructed and then you have an effect on your cognitive thinking if you don't sleep eight hours and you wake up in the morning you're gonna fail in a very big meeting because your your brain is gonna be focusing on sleep <laughs> yeah so it's like try so and if you're if you're just comfortable with whatever your life is even when you're in pain because you know what i know that pain it's familiar to me the brain likes anything that is familiar if it's familiar, I'm okay. You know, I, I know what to expect. If I get into the unknown, I don't, that's where you talk about financials. Like, you know, someone is, they, they prefer to even be on the hard part instead of making a decision to do something different because the difference right. is new. And you, but you know what? You got to be creative to see opportunities. Yeah. Or even the shame aspect of it too, like having the conversations around something that is new or different, there could be an, a level of shame. I see this a lot with finances, right? Like we, we feel like, oh man, we're not where we're supposed to be, or we don't want necessarily people to see us fail. So why do we want to try something new and be creative and step into that space? But what do we learn when we're creative and we step into it too? I think that's, something we have to ask ourselves about 2020 what were the things that we were able to look at differently for ourselves I had this conversation with our last podcast guest um, just her and I one-offs uh, Stephanie and I talked about how slowing down was the thing that I learned the most in 2020 like mm -hmm. how important that was for me in my life and had I had I not, and I've heard that from so many people, right? Had I not been forced to slow down, I don't think I would have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that I like people probably think creative, someone painting or someone singing or acting. Yes. Or art. It's not. Being creative is doing something different than what you normally, normally would do. It's just opening your eyes to different avenues. That is being creative. 
Mm. Every human being is creative. So if someone says to you, I'm not creative, you say, you challenge them. Yes, you are. What have you done that you haven't done before that is different anywhere in your life? Everyone has done something. And in 2020, it's probably an easier year because everyone had something yeah. that they had to do that was different. So that's why I use the word creativity. You know, what was what was something for you in 2020 that you got creative around or did differently? It was being more home and being okay with it because I was also go, 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 out, out, out. And just seeing how comfortable it could be and how good it could be to just be here and be able to do everything without having to be somewhere. Because mm-hmm. I'm always... I was always in, you know, a bunch of events. You're at every event yes. doing all of the things all always. Things. And I can do things from, I, I had to be creative to do things here. You know, my, my work actually improved in 2020 because I can have clients from all over the world now with right. Zoom. And right. that was one of my biggest fears because I, for me, my coaching was my energy. You know, I have to be in front of the person. And you know what? It's exactly the same. They can feel it through the screen because oh, it's absolutely. face to face. So um, yeah, and, and it, it, the, the biggest change for me was that. And one that was beautiful, it was um, my husband and I had to be, we were just two of us for the whole lockdown. It was like, what, almost three months, right? Because my daughter stayed with her dad almost the, it was the entire time. She would come one day or another, but it was just the two of us. Um, and I, we, I totally fell all over in love with him again. Mm, that's beautiful. Because we had to, we had a lot of arguments and stuff, but in the sense, lots of politics. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it just got hers together. Like just, just, I was working in my office upstairs and he working in his office downstairs, six o'clock. I would look for the time to be sick so we could go downstairs, cook together, open a nice bottle of wine. Our wine cellar almost got empty. We got all the <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy that could help with that. And, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then we sat to watch a Netflix show. This everyone did, right? Something that we never did. We never sat down to watch a show together. So it kind of became something that we now actually do. We don't we don't do it every night, but almost every other night we like to sit down, choose a show, and watch it together. I think that's beautiful. I have to second that. I mean, I, I love my husband too, something fierce. And we, we did, we fell head over heels in love. And it was, it was a battle for me because I had this huge change that happened for me in 2020. And so, you know, I actually ended up taking on more household responsibilities than I had previously done in my life. And so I was like, there was parts where ours were not political fights. Ours was more like, I'm doing all of the dishes and I am doing all of the cleaning. What are you doing? I'm home all day with the kids. And I was like, I don't want to be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. Um, I was not pregnant. Let's just classify that. Like, (laughs) but like, that was like this mentality that I felt like I had fallen into, but we got better at communicating. Mm -hmm because we, we were forced to spend more time together and we chose to be better at communicating, right? Cause we could just have sat and argued and fought and done all of the things. And it was funny because we did get in a, this was probably a month ago. Um, I'm a very vibrant personality, which is why I I, I joke that I should be Brazilian (laughs) because I feel sometimes I have this big, um, personality and it comes out and I get angry and, he just sat there and took it. And he was like, you needed to get that out. Didn't you <laughs> versus like, he, he could have just turned the ter- like tables on me and got mad at me and yelled at me. But because we have slowed down so much and listened to each other, he knows now there are times where I just need to release mm-hmm. and he'll support me in that space. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Oftentimes there is just so many things that like from a, I love that you say creative creativity sparks opportunity because we could look at last year and say, there are so many things that we missed, um, you know, birthdays, weddings, 
um, interactions with family, all of those different things, um, losing loved ones, saying our last goodbyes, all of those things. There are so many things. And, and we're not here to say that those things aren't hurtful because you are an incredibly positive person. And it doesn't mean that just because we choose positivity that we don't have these other feelings. So how do people without turning it into, um, what quote unquote can be sometimes chosen as toxic positivity, right? Cause we talk about it being fake, but how do we actually from a brain st stimulation aspects, choose things in our day-to-day -day lives that help us move forward, especially when we talk about setting goals or visions or things like that going forward. How do we think about it in a day-to-day -day little snippets? At the end of the day, in my brain coaching class, they actually talk about it. Uh, you, you call it toxic positivity. There is a dangerous positivity. Uh, if you are way too positive, you don't see danger. Mm. And you can get into danger. If you're just thinking the world is beautiful and then there's someone trying to, you know, cross the road with a big truck, you know, I'm just, I have to, I can do it. You know, I'm so good, I can do it. And then the train is going to go, go over you. So you, being positive, there's a, you know, it, it, it's not, maybe positivity, what I would consider is like choosing the most positive perspective or mm. the perspective that will be, uh, going towards your path. One thing that I always, uh, like one tip that I'm gonna give to your listeners that I give to my clients that really helps is think of the areas of your life where you want change. Spiritual, relationship with my husband, relationship with my daughter, or you know my, my work. So whatever the areas, make a list, one pager. Put the areas, and for each one, you're going to write what is your goals, what is your, what are your wants and wishes for that specific area of your life. I want to have a good relationship with my husband, and I want whatever you want. This is I want this to happen, this to happen, this to happen. Make this is one page. By the end of every single day, look at all your actions in every one of those areas of your life, and just confirm. Have I behaved in a way that is taking me towards my goals, mm. my wishes, my wants? If I haven't, this specific attitude, mm, how can I do it differently to course correct and go back to my path without, you know, being hard on yourself? Because the problem that a lot of people have, and I see that because I coach women, they are very hard on themselves when they make a mistake or when they're not accepted. At the end of the day, no one is perfect. Perfection does not exist, okay? So mm -hmm. the perfectionist is someone who is trying to avoid pain, blame, and shame. And shame lurks around perfection. Anyone mm -hmm. who's a perfectionist has shame lurking around. And shame is not a good feeling. You have shame when you feel that you are bad and that is affecting your core soul. And you are not bad. There is no such a thing. Every human being is beautiful. What's broken sometimes is the patterns that we bring from the past that can be fixed. Beliefs that are no longer beliefs that are serving you. So the positivity thing is basically you analyzing the thoughts that make you feel negative. If you're feeling negative, in any way, shape, or form. I'm anxious, I'm sad, I'm upset, I'm a grouch, and whatever the feeling that like I'm, I'm have resentment. What are the thoughts that are creating that feeling? Because it's always a thought, one, two, or three, like thoughts or beliefs. What is that specific belief that is creating this feeling in me? Because that is what's creating the feeling in you. Find that thought, write that thought down, and that's the Byron Katie suggestion. When you have a negative thought, write it down, say it out loud, and then you question it. Is it true? Mm -hmm. Is it absolutely true? Can I 100% confirm this thought is true? And then you go ahead and say, how do I feel? Or how do I react when I believe in this thought? Who am I when I believe in this thought? How do I react with the people around me that are connected to this thought? And lastly, 
who would I be if I did not believe in this thought? Mm. And then you switch it around, turn around to the opposite. If you're saying whatever, like, I'm worthless. What is the opposite of that? I'm worthy. Exactly. And you know what? That is true. Mm -hmm. Truer than the original one. So you then, from then on, and that's that comes the brain part. When you have a belief, a habit, a thought that is constantly in your head, it means that it's hardwired in your brain. A neural pathway that was created, it's like a network that is like imprinted in your brain. That's not going to go anywhere. You can't get rid of it. The only way of getting rid of it is by creating a whole new neural pathway, a whole new network with a whole new thought, habit, or belief. And how do you do that? By doing it. This yeah, you work have that to I like... Said, I am, every time you have a thought, I'm not worthy. You know what? This is not true. I am worthy. And every time the thought comes, I am worthy. I am worthy. You are shifting that neural pathway from the old one to the new. And once you do that enough and it starts becoming hardwired in your brain, the other one prunes. Mm -hmm. But that's an exercise that takes time and effort. Let's talk about time and effort a little bit, because I think sometimes we expect everything. We live in an instantaneous society, right? Where the Amazon culture of, I'm going to get it in two days, which by the way, I don't don't get any of my Amazon shipments in two days anymore (laughs) anyway, but uh, (laughs) they're a little busy, a little busy right now. How do we, I think, knowing that not everything is fixed in that time frame? What are some behaviors that we can remind ourselves of when we're shooting for some something big and audacious and we've dreamed for? How do we remember the hard work and time and give ourselves grace? You just need to think about it, analyze it. What what what's gonna get me there? What is the hard work that needs to be done? Because no one wants to do hard work. Yeah. Every big dream, every, every big dream, if it's really big, <laughs> it will need to have hard work in between. So getting your brain accustomed with the idea that you do have to have the hard work be, to be done on a daily basis, you just need to do. And one thing that I told you, like people talk about motivation natural motivation your brain only has for the basic needs for sleep for eating for sex for going to the bathroom those are the natural motivations you don't even need to think about it you're going to do it because it's natural okay unless you have hormone imbalance which happens Mm -hmm. to people um sleep is one of them like you know if you have even sometimes you know if your serotonin level is not good it can affect your sleep or other hormones. Uh, but if, you, if everything is normal in you, um, your natural motivation, you're not going to have, for example, for exercising, you're not going to have a motivation to exercise. You <laughs> just have to do it. So what I remember when I was doing the, yeah, when I did the neuroscience uh, science, um, class with this Brazilian um, woman, she was like, it's literally, um, it's just one, two, three, go literally so that's why you have to figure out what are the tricks that i can put to my brain so that i can actually do it for example for me getting out of bed is not that easy because i like pressing the snooze button so yes we talked about this mornings are not your no but you know what i it's been working i've been doing it and it actually it's making a big difference i my phone is in the bathroom Mm. which is my alarm so when it rings in the morning i have no option i can't trick my brain of like snooze and then i'll sleep a little bit more and then i you know i have to go to the bathroom because i'm in the bathroom turn it off i close the door turn on the lights and i'm in the bathroom brush teeth gotta do it you know and working out and you if you realize when you don't want to do something you will always find an excuse to do something that you like That's the procrastinating. You don't procrastinate just because you procrastinate because you don't want to do the thing that you're procrastinating. That's it. It's just that simple. So I I love when I'm exercising, but sometimes I don't want to do it. Right. How do I get myself to do it? 
instead of me, I know you like, that's why you have to always analyze your behavior to see where you can change. For example, I was like, why, why do I sometimes I get so caught up into the, in the morning, I don't exercise until like 11. Because if I get in the morning, if I look at my phone, if I start answering emails or looking at, you know, uh, my messages in, in, in social media, because I always want to respond, I will be caught in the phone for hours. So that's one thing that I, I, I'm not, I don't touch my phone until I'm done with my exercise and sit down for breakfast. So you have to know what the trick is, is me, knowing what cat gets caught you in the, catch you in the, you know, and another thing is if I get a cup of coffee before I exercise, because I always said, I need coffee to give me energy to exercise. A cup of coffee reminds me of me sitting, reading the news, you know, so I end up like, yeah, let me sit and read just one news. You don't read only one. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you go to the next, the next and to the next. Uh, and then when you see it's already like, you know, almost an hour past. So it's you finding what is not working or what is catching me so that I don't get to where I need to be and nip in the butt and change that habit, create a new habit, hardwire in your brain, a different way of doing it. Yeah. I mean, we talk about working out you and I loved, I mean, we do love the feelings when we're working out. Like Mm -hmm. I have, like, I don't always love getting out to my workout space and getting there, you know, but as soon as, you know, sometimes I started the journey with setting my alarm, like you did, I would set out my clothes so that I would have that ready to go. Like I would make it a part of the routine. And now I've been doing it for three years that it's just a habit. Like I roll out of bed and I'm like, all right, it's time to work out. Do I still want to get on the bike every day? Or do I still want to lift weights? Or do I still want to do? No, I don't want to every day. And then the feeling afterwards, I'm like, yes, I've accomplished something. I've done something already hard today. I've already done something hard today. So it means that I can take on other hard things. 15 minutes. That's the time that it takes for your body to release the hormones, the the mood hormones, you know, the serotonin, endorphins. And if you're doing it, listening to a music that you like, that gives you chills and stuff, you you even get dopamine. Yeah. Yeah. So Oh, yeah. I, I came out of a workout the other day and I told my husband, I was like, I think I'm high. Like that was like, the best workout ever. I was like, I feel like I could just work out all day long, yeah. which, you know, I don't necessarily recommend either, unless that's something that you do on a regular basis. But I think that's the, the play that we have too. like our minds, our bodies and our actions And the things that we want to do in our lives are all correlated to each other. So if we pigeonhole them in their different spaces and we don't see how they all work together, we're really missing the boat. Mm -hmm. So as we kind of wrap all of this up, let's talk about some of the things that you are doing right now to help people get to that space. I know you've got group coaching, people can hang out with you on Instagram. Um, What are some other things that you're doing that people could connect with you on? Uh, Yeah, so the group coaching is something I actually just started. Uh, I, I had a few, I have a few groups starting next week and I'm building groups for February. It's a groups of between four and six. I don't want more than that because I want it to be intimate. Yes, and we're that. working on basically for me, for you to have a fulfilling life, you need to start with awareness. Self-awareness is the first step for you to see where you are, what you feel, who you want to be, who you were, everything about being aware. And once you have that awareness, you the next step is self-love. Mm-hmm. How do I accept myself? How do I love myself in the process? And then once you have that, you can move into relationships, parenting, spouse, friendships, any relationship. For you to have a healthy relationship, you first have to have awareness of yourself and you have to create the open awareness of the other person, right? And then when you have self-love, you learn how to create the boundaries to create a healthy relationship 
And once you have a healthy relationship and everything else is full follow, follow through, how do I create habits, healthy habits, daily healthy habits for me to reach my goals? So that those are the four facets of my group coaching is once a week for four weeks, it's at one hour each week. And each week we go through that, you know, the different aspect of the coaching that will help you be ready. In this case, what I'm trying to focus on getting ready for 2021. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this actually can work for anyone whenever I might even continue with this throughout the year uh, because every day is a day to start new (laughs) yes that's a beautiful thought to think about like we don't have to hold ourselves to this aspect of I failed yesterday that yesterday was yesterday and today you get a fresh start totally and I have the one-on-one coaching which is for me is what I love to do because that's where I see the real transformation of women Mm-hmm. So it's women that are going through major life transition. Uh, and I just started a new facet of my business recently, uh, working with young women recently, recently graduated from college or grad school. Okay. Uh, so normally my clients that, you know, the people who are paying for this are the parents. Um, this 22, 23, 24 year old young women who are a little lost um, and they need some you know, umph on understanding their self-confidence and how do I actually get into the professional world? Uh, how do I create my self-confidence and how do I step into a new career or, you know, uh, a career or how adulting. Right. <laughs> right. So it is a three month project that I have, you know, we meet once a week and, um, and then we just get them from graduate to fabulous. It's the name. Oh. Oh, that's it's fantastic. Yeah, so it's on my website. So if you go to www.feelfabulousbyfabiana.com, it's in work with Fabiana. It's one of them. And there's a couple of uh, testimonials of two young women that I've worked with. Amazing women. Um, and um, and yeah, I have the book that I wrote, but I, I'm preparing to write a new book because I'm turning 50 in April. Yay! And it's all about aging gracefully. Mm, beautiful. Gratefully. <laughs> and it's just accepting aging in a graceful way instead of trying to look younger every time you get older. You know, I don't need to look 29. I was 29 and it was amazing, but I'm now turning 50 and I don't need to spend tons of money with the beauty industry to look a way that won't change how I feel inside. Mm. How I feel inside is how I want to work with. I that feel is- 20. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love that. And you have, you have that energy. Absolutely. I can't wait until we can dance together again and, and have fun and all of those things when we're not on a computer screen. Um, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom today. Uh, for the listeners out there who are listening um, to this episode, Fabiana's heart and soul is in everything that she does every single day. And so I encourage you, if this is a space where you feel like you need some extra energy to feel feel fabulous, I, I encourage you strongly to reach out to her. Um, she's incredibly responsive and will always hold space for individuals. You do such a great job with that. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's always an honor to be your guest because you, you, you are an amazing individual yourself. You're you're making a difference in a lot of people's lives. And thank that, you. I respect everyone who does that. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Me too.